everyone. This is Laura Lane from Tuanala Magazine. I'm here with Andre today of One Desire. Um, so hi, thanks first of all for doing this. How are you doing in these times? Um, I'm doing really good, thank you. Thanks for having me. I mean, uh, obviously uh, extraordinary times and so forth. Kind of, I mean, um, no, but <laughs> I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Yeah, I actually heard that you and the ba some members of the band uh, ha had the coronavirus after the tour. Are you doing fine health-wise now, or were you one of the lucky ones who didn't have it? Well, um, actually, um, I, I was never tested, actually. Um, so I don't know if I had it or not. But I mean, we all got home and at least the three of us actually had the coronavirus. Um, and um, we were all placed into quarantine and so was I. Uh, but I just never really showed any symptoms at all. So, but I probably had it because I mean, the probability of me not having it since we, I mean, we came, we canceled uh, over two thirds of a tour and we basically came home from, you know, the belly of the beast of coronavirus and um so i probably had it as well but I, I was one of the lucky ones that really didn't experience any kind of uh, complications but so yeah i'm i'm doing it good thank okay. you so much that's uh, no worries it's good to hear um so we're doing this interview basically because you're going to release your sophomore album midnight empire um what can you tell fans about the sound? Hmm, the sound. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Like uh, I always find uh, both uh, both the sound and uh, well the genre uh, in general. I think is, for me is kind of hard to explain. But I don't know some kind of uh, simplistic version of. Uh, I guess I would like to say that it's, uh, well, it's, I think it sounds quite, quite modern and uh, quite big, mm -hmm. but still we, we try not to make it like a cliche uh, big kind of, but like I said, it's, I find it quite hard to explain both the sound and the genre because I think I'm a little bit too, you know, deep uh, inside of it. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to be uh, objective. I think it's always easy for me to explain the sound of artists and uh, records and songs, but that's only when it's uh, somebody else's uh, material. Um, your label classifies you as melodic rock, I believe. Do you kind of agree with that? Like, or do you think like there's many kind of influences that you guys have been using in your music? I think that's a pretty good, uh, like, because we have so many different influences and uh, I would like to see uh, us as pretty uh, versatile in that sense. Uh, at least uh, for me and Jimmy, uh, like uh, the main uh, writers when, and also we, um, we work on everything very closely together with Jimmy. I think we both have, I mean, we take our influences from anywhere. A lot of influences come from like radio, pop music, like current current music and so we're um but yeah i think that's a pretty good uh way to classify it i guess i would say melodic hard rock instead of melodic rock but that's the only thing i would change yeah one of the things that i noticed about the album is that there are quite many radio friendly songs and also the sound it sounds quite modern uh the production um is that also like a conscious choice you made to have that specific sound for the songs. Yeah, I would I would say it's a conscious uh, choice, uh, like because um, obviously there's a lot of. Uh, I mean, we still can't get away from the '80s uh, influences that we've got. I mean, like uh, all of our favorite bands are from the '80s, but we try to really like balance that out with uh, a modern sound, so that it's not just retro. Uh, 80s music so yeah it's definitely a conscious choice to to try to incorporate all of these uh, modern elements so that it yeah doesn't just turn out like 
Red Girl Music. You released your debut album three years ago, I believe. Uh, now you have this one coming. Is there anything you learned during the process of the first one that you took into account while creating Midnight Empire? Or was the process with the songwriting in terms of that, like, similar? I would say it was quite similar. I mean, you always learn stuff. But it's hard for me to pinpoint any uh, certain thing that we would have learned. but. I think the difference uh, between uh, how we made the first one and how we made this one is that when we made the first one, we didn't really even have this current band. Like it was, uh, it was more like um, me and uh, me and Ozzy and uh, and Jimmy, and then Jonas came along in the in the end, and you know songs came from here and came from there, and we had it was. Uh, quite spread out, so to speak. And now this time we actually had a band and we knew what we were working towards, kind of. So it was a little bit more collected in a sense this time. Well, still, it took a lot longer, but I, <laughs> I don't know why. Were there maybe any... that's why, because uh, maybe, you got, maybe we got nervous when we knew that, you know, okay, we have a band and we... Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden you have you have fans and uh, maybe it's more pressure you know when when you're a new band and nobody knows who you are then you can just kind of go with the flow yeah that's true people do have expectations and such and you had like the yeah. your single hurt was pretty like you know played all over around the, the country as well so <laughs> Um, did you experience any challenges during creating this one, or was it a smooth process? I'd say uh, there's always challenges. Um, I wouldn't say that there were uh, too many challenges. I can't really think of anything specific. Uh, I mean, it was quite a smooth process, yeah, but it was also quite a long process, and uh, um, it's a tough question. I, it's hard for me to say as well, like, because um, we didn't really, uh, we kind of, um, how should I explain this? Uh, at least me and Jimmy, we kind of, I mean, we've done uh, three, three records, I think, together before One Desire as well. So we really, really know each other in that sense, uh, like working in the studio and stuff. And we always try to work like this, that, well, of course you have deadlines and stuff, but we won't release anything until we think that it's really good. That means that the process is always kind of uh, flowing, so to speak, and it's, um, it's not that very linear, like, okay, we have 10 songs here and now we, we record them during these months and blah, blah, blah. It's more like one song at a time. Does it sound great? Yes, no, next song. And then we also write a lot of uh, songs in the middle of the process. So it's always kind of chaotic when we do mm -hmm. records. And you never really know when it's going to be done. And But we're used to that. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, so if you so, guys, yeah, the, the weird, but. Uh, if you guys basically write all the time and stuff like that, does that mean that you also had a lot more songs to go for, you know, when you were selecting them? Um, and if so, um, like what does one song like make fit for being on the record? Uh, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think I do. Um, yeah, I think this time, well, yeah, there we, we can uh, compare that with the first album. Basically, on the first album, we we just kind of grabbed every single song we, we had because, um, but this time, I think we had over, was it 30 or 40 songs, actually. So, um, well, basically, we've got a lot of uh, material already that can be kind of straight up uh, incorporated into the next album because we left out a lot of good songs from this one because uh, we had so much material uh, 
and how did we then choose the songs for this album? That's also a very good question. I guess that's also a point where we're not really, we have a very strange kind of structure there. We just kind of go um, go with what we feel like. Mm-hmm. like yeah. And also how the songs fit in together and stuff like that. But definitely, yeah, we had a lot of songs and left out a lot of good ones. But I don't see that as a bad thing because uh, we don't have to start from zero when we do the next one. Yeah, and, so uh, it also take less time for fans to... Yeah, and uh, like, at least I am currently myself here during uh, Corona hell. I'm uh, currently writing a lot of new stuff also, like all the time. So I think the next... Uh, well, basically, you could say that we're currently working on the next one, because uh, at least I am, So, and I think Jimmy is as well. So. Mm-hmm. Plus all those songs we had left over from this one, so yeah. <laughs> um, so you mentioned already, um, like that the songs need to fit together a little bit. I was wondering why you chose the title "Midnight Empire" and how it kind of reflects on the songs. Like, are they thematically connected somehow, or is it like are they separate? Well, yeah, the I would say the album name kind of it um, kind of represents um, the whole process uh, itself. Like uh, Midnight Empire for us, it kind of stands for. Uh, also, we go back to like the working process. Like when we work in the studio, we always have the best inspiration after midnight, kind of, and uh, we work a lot during the night and late into the night and into the mornings. Um, So it's kind of, um, that's when we have our own kind of personal empire. So (laughs) sounds a little bit cheesy, but, but it's, uh, it's quite fitting for the creative uh, process uh, itself for us. Mm -hmm. That's when we, uh, that's when we rule. (laughs) Talking like about the lyrics and stuff like that as well like what sorts of themes are present in the in the album in the songs yeah the themes uh, i got asked uh, that question um, a couple of times before i would say that it's not really any uh any like um we don't have like a like they they don't all uh, follow any theme like uh, every single song has its own uh, theme but i would say it's pretty pretty basic uh, everyday stuff uh, i write a lot a lot of uh, well, love songs basically but obviously they have to be um, you have to kind of dramatically tune it a little bit everything has to sound more dramatic than it actually is mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um <laughs> so basically i would say we take uh, well from our own lives and our own experience quite uh, normal uh, subjects that each and every one of us face but then we kind of like I said tune it up for dramatic effect since it has to be <laughs> like uh, yeah dramatic and but yes yeah, themes so uh, a lot of love songs at least mm. sounds boring but what can you do <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's it kind of always works like love songs. So you basically always add like a little bit of Hollywood to one that her desire to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like uh, you can take a, a basic uh, basic theme. Like, well, I mean, love songs. That's also kind of an everyday thing for for most people, or like love or relationships or whatever, and then. Uh, even though it's not, I mean, you don't have to get divorced in order to write a really dramatic uh, love Mm -hmm. song. You just have to kind of dramatically fine tune it a little bit. So it sounds like, ah, I'm dying inside. How do you make sure that, uh, because you know, 80s songs are always a tiny bit cheesy. And um, I thought, especially in your balance, they're not overly cheesy because I'm not really a ballad person, but how do you like accomplish something like that? Like, 
do you consciously think about those things or well for that we have a pretty good uh, system like um because i'm the cheesy one and uh, jim is like cheese stopper <laughs> so, so he always uh like we always you know like uh look at the lyrics together it doesn't matter who wrote it but we always kind of uh, sit with e each other's lyrics and stuff and most of the time it's about jimmy kind of cheese proofing my lyrics it's like no andre this is too cheesy we have to change this and uh so we have a really good relationship there that we kind of uh, we're good at like balancing each other i think it, it works very well for me at least um so uh, yeah we can thank jimmy for that for because if i wouldn't have him everything would be overly cheesy <laughs> i also um like i wanted to ask you a question about the album art because i felt like this little kind of ancient greek atmosphere and i wondered why and who came up with the album art and stuff like that <laughs> or is it just something you all liked and picked or something yeah, I mean, uh, I would like to answer something a little bit more interesting, but I'm going to just have to be boring and uh, tell you the truth, which is, uh, you know, uh, we just pulled around with a little bit of different artworks that obviously had to be something that was connected to the, the name of the album, but we just kind of liked it and just kind of looked good. Mm -hmm. No no deeper meaning there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, unfortunately you also made two music videos for this album do you have like any fun stories about the days you were recording them or well there are always fun stories usually it's uh, stuff that wasn't that much fun at the moment but, <laughs> but it's uh, fun you know afterwards for example the the first video for for after you've gone which um recorded a we shot that video in a well, basically like a, an old castle in the, in the so southern finland outside and uh well it doesn't look that bad but we we had something like minus uh, six seven degrees uh, celsius was in the beginning of january and uh you know we shot it uh we shot from i don't know four in the morning till well, probably like 12 hours, and I don't know if that's a funny story, but it was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was going to ask that, because to me, at least, it looked like, you know, the weather was not that nice or kind of gray, but <laughs> so it was yeah. like winter time. But yeah, we, well, it would have, it was actually a, quite uh, um, interesting, because uh, it doesn't usually look like that in Finland in the beginning. Of of uh, January usually you, you'd have something like minus 20 instead of I mean minus 6 is like nothing for that uh, time of year so I, I don't know what if uh, it would have looked better or well I don't think we would have made the video if we would have had a lot of uh, snow and stuff but so we kind of got lucky with the weather but it was still really cold well, because of the pandemic right now, a lot of artists are like coming up with, you know, alternative things to do. Uh, have you guys thought about doing something for your fans or? Yeah, I think we've uh, we've definitely uh, thought about that. And uh, at least for me personally, I would like, I mean, we see, we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of other bands do. Wise. <laughs> a lot of uh, bands do these um, kind of like uh, real shows like really professionally made you know like on a stage with a real uh, lighting technician and uh, basically in a real venue and stuff like that I would like to do something like that like just uh, a normal show in a normal venue obviously no uh, no crowd there but and you could uh, stream something like that for example Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I have um, I have a cat and a dog, and they like to <laughs> chase chase each other. 
but yeah, uh, I think we're we're probably going to do something like that as well. Uh, can't really tell you anything more at the moment, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be something like that, and uh, I would I would love to do it as well because uh, I mean for every 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 and any musician, it really kind of hurts that you, that you can't uh, go out and and play play live for the fans especially for us since uh, we were in the middle of doing that and, and we really felt like it was going going so great with the new songs and the tour and uh, the crowd were they were fantastic and then we kind of had to had to cut it short so you kind of have this uh, feeling inside that man i really want to finish that job yeah um talking a bit about that tour like um how was it did you get to play some new songs to the audience as well and if so how did they react yeah we uh, we did uh, and this was back uh, back when we actually had only released uh, one video single from from this album and we kind of decided that we're still going to play like half of the set were new songs so we played a uh, uh well that one and then we played uh three more uh even though nobody had ever heard them but i mean bands used to do that all the time back in the days like you know iron maiden used to play whole albums that nobody had heard and i think that's a pretty good way to do it because uh you can see like honest reactions people don't know the songs uh and i think they work really well and the reception was uh fantastic i mean uh it's the first time for me that I've ever done that, like play half a set that people haven't heard. And I can't imagine how how much fun it would be to to play those songs now that people have heard them. So like does that as a musician, like do you get nervous when you have to play something that you know no one else knows and you don't know what they're gonna think about it or Well, yeah, you do, but like I get nervous anyways, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't that, isn't that supposed to go away after a while or right, do you still get nervous? Yeah, so I've heard that it's, well, it, it gets easier, but, but for me, it, it never really truly goes away and it doesn't really matter if it's, it's a small gig, it's a big gig, it's a, you know, a acoustic, a full band, it's on TV if it's not doesn't matter but I think that's a good thing because it kind of means that well too too nervous is not good because then you're gonna just be too nervous but if you're not nervous at all that means you're too relaxed and that's not good either mm -hmm. yeah it means you care as well I guess <laughs> um, obviously it's a little bit hard to Normally at this point I would ask you about your plans, but since we don't really know what's going to go on in the future, I'm just going to ask you like, um, how can fans support you directly the best way? Um, well, I would say that, I mean, people can support us by, uh, well, obviously as soon as the, the record hits the shelves, so to speak, you can, uh, purchase that record or, or just uh, just songs or just uh, listen to the songs and then uh, yeah just uh, those just enjoy the music basically and uh, I mean uh, spread it around whatever and uh, as soon as we're doing some some uh, stream gigs or whatever or even one then I mean check that thing out and uh, and then, I mean, we, everybody all around the world hopes that, obviously, that everything, everybody's going to stay safe and stuff, but that at some point things are going to turn around and uh, we are all slowly but surely going to be able to return to some form of normality. <laughs> 